This is the Tiny Pilot's Voyager 2A. It's something I would recommend for any home lab. For some context, I've been messing around with two NVIDIA 3090 nodes in my home setup. Specifically, I've wasted so much time dealing with NVIDIA GPU drivers. So NVIDIA, fuck you. If you've ever been down that road, you know how easy it is to mess things up and end up having to reinstall the entire OS. I can't tell you how many times I've found myself physically plugging into these machines. This is where a KVM over IP comes into play or keyboard, video, mouse over internet. Unlike traditional KVMs, a KVM over IP allows for remote management from anywhere. It was clear that a solution like this would improve my life as a home lab admin. You can think of it like being next to each machine you want to manage with a physical keyboard and mouse, but from the other side of the world. This is where the Tiny Pilot steps in. The Tiny Pilot is a consumer KVM over IP device, which attempts to mimic some of the features of the enterprise KVM over IP solutions, such as the ID rack offered by Dell. The main value prop of the device is its low price as compared to the enterprise solutions. Before choosing the Tiny Pilot, I considered Pi KVM and some high priced enterprise options. The enterprise choices were quickly dismissed due to their costs, often exceeding 1000 US dollars. This left Tiny Pilot and Pi KVM as the budget friendly options for tech enthusiasts like myself. I chose Tiny Pilot over Pi KVM mainly because Pi KVM needed a physical adapter connected to the motherboard's power pins. At $399, it's a cost effective alternative to the pricey KVMs. For added flexibility, there's a power over Ethernet add on available for an extra $99. And if you're using equipment that only supports VGA, you can get an HDMI to VGA adapter for just $14.99. In terms of build quality, this device is encased in a thick steel shell. The design isn't just also purely aesthetic. It also includes venting holes for the exhaust fan. When I compare this to my Canakit Raspberry Pi, this thing has got some serious mass. It feels solid, almost bomb proof. When I'm on the move, I have no hesitation just tossing it into my backpack. That's not something I'd do with my Canna kit, which always leaves me a bit nervous about potential damage. Let's talk about what it's like to get this thing set up and running. The Tiny Pilot comes with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card that's already preloaded with the operating system. All you have to do is connect an HDMI cable for video, plug in an ethernet cable for network access, and finally, attach a USB cable for keyboard and mouse. The USB also acts as a virtual media device for when you want to mount live ISOs. Within a few minutes, the Tiny Pilot should come online and should be accessible from the default hostname under HTTPS Tiny Pilot. This hostname is configurable from within the UI. Now let's take a look at the UI. Its UI is browser based. From the moment you open the browser, you will find a straightforward dashboard where you can easily upload ISO files to create a virtual library. You can remotely mount these ISOs onto your connected devices. This feature serves as a versatile toolkit for managing multiple operating systems without the need to repeatedly reflash your USB drive. There's one issue I want to point out. Out of the box, the device does not come with any pre-configured auth. This leaves the door open for any potential unauthorized access. As soon as you get this thing up and running, make sure you set up your web authentication. It's a critical step for bolstering your security. Let's go through the process of installing an operating system together with the Tiny Pilot. I'll be demonstrating with Ubuntu Server. Here's how it happens, step by step. First, let's go to the Tiny Pilot dashboard. We'll navigate to the Manage Virtual Media modal. We'll upload our Ubuntu ISO. I've already conveniently downloaded this. Next, we'll click on the image we want to mount and select the mount option in the drop down. It's time to restart the machine. As the server is coming back to life, let's boot into the BIOS.
we will find the boot menu and select the option to boot from our virtual media device. We'll wait a few moments until we see the familiar Ubuntu installation screen. From here, you can proceed with the setup as if you're sitting there with the keyboard and mouse. And you're good to go. If things go sideways and you need a reset, it's as easy as flashing a new OS onto the micro SD. The official website provides you with the ISO that you can download to flash the device. On the power efficiency side, this thing sips electricity exactly like a Raspberry Pi, because it is. I know this is very important to my European viewers. I crunched the numbers and for me to run this 24-7 for an entire year, the total cost for me would be $7.36. This is at my electricity rate of 14 cents per kilowatt hour. The main limitation for me was the lack of advanced power control features. Sometimes your machine gets stuck and you need to hit the physical reset button. This is something the enterprise KVM IP solutions provide out of the box. The slightly cheaper Pi KVM also supports this. So there you have it, Tiny Pilot Voyager 2A, a simple, cost-effective and efficient KVM IP solution that's perfect for small-scale setups.